you asked for it, here it is, Flux in Forge. So you can see up here, we have as the UI selection, we have selected Flux here, we have the Flux dev BNB NF4 checkpoint, and we have a prompt here. We generated Cyberpunk sign that reads Flux in Forge. And if I generate this again, it's gonna take about 12 seconds, and then we're gonna have a new Flux image in Forge. And we're doing this with the Euler sampler, 20 steps, and we have a distilled CFG scale at 3.5. We're getting here now Flux in Forge. And the cool thing is it works with image to image, it works with inpainting, and even high risk fix. So I'm gonna show you that in a second, but first, Let's get this installed right away. Ooh, this looks nice. This little um, city street here, Flux in Forge. Love it. Okay, so I put together this little text guide. This is available for everyone. Find the link in the description below. And we have here, if you don't have Forge already installed, here's a guide to get it installed, link there. We're gonna assume for this guide that you have Forge installed. So we're gonna download the Flux models and we want the NF41. There is an FP8 that you can use, but honestly, the NF4 is great. It's 11 gigabytes. It works with six gigabyte cards. So why not go to that link, download this model right there, put it inside Forge Web UI Models Stable Fusion. So that would be here, Web UI Models, and then Stable Fusion, plop that straight in there. After you've done that, you can go back to your main Forge folder and you can double click this update and make sure that you have the latest version. Now I have it, it's already up to date, press any key to continue, so I'm just doing that. And it also says here in the guide, step three, run update.bat. Step four, start your forge. If you've forgotten how to start your forge, well, it's just as simple as pressing here, run. You're gonna get this, it's gonna get everything running for you. And once that's finished, you're gonna see this. You will have the SD here pre-selected, so you just need to press flux, you need to select the flux checkpoint, and then you can generate anything. Cyberpunk woman in blue hair, pink, yellow tinted sunglasses at night. That's a great song by the way, sunglasses at night, oldie but goldie. So now we have coming in live here on my RTX 4090, a generation of this cyberpunk woman in blue hair and pink yellow tinted sunglasses at night. And this took, we'll just take a quick peek in the command prompt. And this took 14 seconds. We have 1.4 iterations per second. We are running this at 896 by 1152. And I also found this very convenient size uh, guide on Reddit by user Aplaka with uh, some of the sizes that are great to use for Flux. Flux dev said that the Flux has a maximum of two megapixels. So these are the numbers converted. Uh, great job by a placa. Now I did tell you that this works with more than text to image, right? So first of all, you can just enable the high risk fix here and, and run this again. Now this will obviously take a little longer. So last time I ran this, this took about a minute for me. And as you can see, you have an ETA. Well, now it says actually 30 seconds, uh, but we'll see here coming in live as this is rendering. Now, obviously, if you're on a six gig VRAM machine, eight gig, 12 gig, whatever, it's gonna be a little bit slower, especially if you run the high-risk fix. So if you do wanna run the high-risk fix, I recommend doing that only on high VRAM machines, or, you know, if you have time to spare, go for it. I don't mind. It's just gonna be a little bit longer for you. And as you can see here, it actually starts slowing down a little bit. So I expect it to maybe take the full minute. So we can see it finished here now. It's looking pretty great, to be honest. Uh, the skin is a little bit too smoothed out, but in this particular image style, I think it works really, really well. And the lighting is just fantastic. If you look at the, the command terminal, we can see that it took actually a little bit longer. It took one minute, 41 seconds, but I am also recording with OBS. So that takes quite the toll on my machine. This usually takes about a minute. Now let's try something else. And if we do, let's say we do a simple one, cat in a hat. And again, this should only take about uh, 10 seconds because we disabled the high-res fix. And now once that's finished, we're gonna send this over to image to image, right? And we have it here now coming in live. We have our cat in a hat looking pretty good. And 
We're going to send that to image to image, pressing this little button down here. We have an old generation I did here previously on the right. And then we're just going to go, go do dog in a hat. I bet you see where this is going. We're going to change the denoising, maybe 0.75. And we are generating. And what image to image does is it actually it's simplified. You can say that it looks at the colors that are there. So there's no control net magic going on. It's basically just looking at the colors and changing what's inside of them. So we have an approximation of the left one here to the right side. And now we have a dog in a hat. And you see that we lost the kind of the pointiness of the hat. So if we want to keep that, you need to lower the denoising, let's say 0.65. But that will also make us resemble the left image more. So there's a fine line between where the cat is transformed into a dog and not, right? So as you can see in this one, it kind of looks like a hybrid between a cat and a dog. So then we need to increase the denoising a little bit more, say 0.7, for example. Now we should probably see a little more dog and a little less cat. But let's see if that little pointy hat stays there. It actually does. And we have more of the dog, but still too much cat. So let's raise this a little more. We actually back at 0.75. Um, let's see this now. Obviously, we can run multiple generations if you have if we're unlucky with the seed. And um, see now we're kind of losing a little point here now. So there's a fine line. Just go back a little bit. But obviously, image to image works pretty well with Flux 2. The tech is there, right? And here we have a dog. And I don't say this is not a cat anymore. They still have the pointy hat. So that's, you know, pretty great success. Now, if we were to want to inpaint this, we can send this to inpaint with a little palette down here. And now we have this one here. So let's say that we want to change this hat, right? So we're, we're painting quite big here. So let's say jeweled ornamented crown with black diamonds. Then we're going to set this to only mask, which will, mean, which will mean that this area only will be generated when it comes to resolution. If you set this to whole picture, all of this will be used as the resolution for setting only masks. So we'll use this value for this area. If it's confusing, check one of my inpainting guides. Let's, uh, well, let's raise this up a little bit. And we are off. And let's see if we can get a jewel ornamented crown with the black diamonds on our little cute dog, doggo here. Not quite. We're getting sort of a pointed hat here. We did get some kind of diamonds there. So let's raise this even more. Now we are using mass content original here. So it's trying to take the black and actually transform that. And now it kind of turned a little bit wild here. We might need to lower the denoising. So we're just going to do that. We're going to lower again 0.8. So the more denoising strength you have, the more you're changing from that black hat that was already there. So again, there's a fine line. We're actually getting somewhere. So we can take this, drag it onto the left one. So now we're iterating. And let's raise this just a smidge more and see what we can do with this. And now we're starting to get somewhere, right? So we're getting this crown here. So we're actually going to take that, keep going, and we're going to go once more. So don't think of it as going from A to B in one step all of the time, right? You can iterate. You can go to small, small mini steps going forward. And here we have actually it's still a hat, but we're getting some crown structures here with the diamonds. We can keep going if we want to. I'm thinking, you know, we're fairly happy with that. We're getting that crown with the black diamonds on top of that cute little dog. So that's pretty cool. If you want to do something completely different, again, check my inpainting guide, but also uh, you can change the mass content to latent noise, which will truly eliminate the black hat here. And Flux, again, works great even with text and more detailed prompts. Here we have our T-Rex image in illustration style on museum display, a sophisticated T-Rex dinosaur with a smoking and monocle is drinking a cup of tea. We didn't get this. Well, it's sort of a more of a suit than a smoking, but that's fine. Uh, it's drinking a cup of tea. The signage on the glass box reads T-Rex. That's going to be the pun of today's video. So that's how you get Flux running inside of Forge. And it works pretty freaking great. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.